Hallmarkies. Welcome back to another episode of Deliver Me a Podcast, courtesy of the Hallmarkies podcast. We are so excited to be talking to you guys about episode number, what is this, three? Yes. Three. Yes. yes. <laughs> three. Um, called Soulmates. And I am your host today, Casey, also known as Hallmark My Words on Twitter. And I have here Jess. Say hello. Hey, everybody. And also Cammie. Hi. Also known as Hook Tardy. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, uh, Soulmates. This one was a very, th- this was a very sweet episode. We have the romance, we have a little bit of a mystery-ish. We have some character development with the um, postables themselves. What did you guys think overall thoughts? I really liked this episode. Um, yeah, like you said, it kind of had a lot, a lot packed into it. Um, I think my favorite part was more of the, the postable story and uh, kind of their investigation of Oliver, which we'll get into into later and um, learning about Rita's book. But yeah, I really like the postable stories in this one. Um, the letter story was was good too, but I just was more intrigued by kind of the the personal stories that we got in this episode. Yes, and that's what I meant by mystery is. Oliver's mysterious behavior. <laughs> um, I one of one of the big things is the actor who plays uh, Sam. Oh, I'm blanking on his name, but he was a guy that I had seen previously on other Hallmark projects before I started watching Saint Seal Delivered, and he was a dork, and so. <laughs> And so when I saw that he was going to be the star of the story, I went, oh, yay! I get to, see I get to I, at first I went, oh, that guy! You know, and then, and then I saw, oh, yeah, he's going to be the letter writer. Okay, this is going to be nice. We get to, we get to see him in a, in a, in a positive light. And then <laughs> my favorite part about the Postables story can be summed up in two lines. <laughs> what is that and what do they have against trees? <laughs> and I would be happy to be your dance partner. <laughs> oh, <laughs> those, yes. those two lines kind of center around my feelings uh, the, those are at the center of my feelings for this episode because you know, Rita's book is just so funny <laughs> so funny to watch and then seeing this very big step that Oliver is forced to take with Shane because the last thing he wants is to have to dance with Rita in a dance <laughs> in a dance show. I once tweeted to Crystal Lowe. I said, "How in the world did you come up with that dance?" Because I'm an actor. We we go through this long list when we're creating a character of what the voice is like, what the walk is like, and what the laugh is like. What you know, just very long list. And so I said, "How in the world?" did you come up with that dance? And she tweeted me back and she said, you know, a lot of time in front of the mirror, a lot (laughs) of my husband laughing at me. (laughs) (laughs) So so, yeah, those are my, those are my two, those are my two favorite parts of the postal story. Yeah. That's too funny. And that is uh, Harrison McDonald. And he was also a Mountie in One Calls the Heart. Hmm. Yep. According to IMDb. Who? Um, Sam. Sam was never a Mountie in One Calls the Heart. I know that. (laughs) I don't know, Cammie. I'm questioning your validity as the hooked hearty. You don't know all this. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> we will find out more. But according to his IMDb, which we know is not always correct, according to Kevin McGarry's birthday. Um, Thank you. <laughs> was Mountie, or Chris McNally's birthday, for that matter. He or was any credited, U.S. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> he was credited as Mountie number two in 2018, which would have been season five, six. So. Six because this because it's 2019 and it's season seven, so 2018 would it's have been season six. 2020. It's 2020. <laughs> so, it would have, so, it would have been, <laughs> so it would have been season five. It's all this quarantining, guys. It's, it's, it's we don't know what day brain. it is. We don't know what year it is. We're just like IMBD. We don't know any days. They're not right. <laughs> So it would so it would have been season five. Okay, I am taking this, this under investigation. I'm yep. becoming a postable Mountie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't I'm go gonna... investigate Mountie number two. Yeah, Mountie number two. Where's Shane and her computer when you need her? Oh man, Shane, <laughs> come back, Shane. <laughs> All righty, so let's jump. Ju- ju- all right. <laughs> Amy, Rachel, take that out. <laughs> or keep it. I think that'll be great. <laughs> Blooper reel. All right. Yeah, All righty, guys. Blooper. Yeah. All righty, guys. So let's dive into the letter story of Sam and Marie. So uh, Sam is obviously a rancher kid, and he has met this young girl named Marie. They're about, what, 9, 10, 11 approximately yeah at this time sounds right and they uh, they've struck up a friendship and you know we don't get to see it as you know the audience we don't see them growing up but it kind of jumps about 10 years um to when sam and marie are now teenagers about to graduate high school and they have obviously fallen in love young oh my love. gosh that kid who played young Sam. So cute. <laughs> he played the character so well. And just, you know, because you can tell, you can tell when chemistry is faked. You really can. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't, I didn't care as much for the girl who played Marie. I thought that she was a little stiff. But other than that, I think she, I think she did fine. She was just a little stiff for me. You're talking about teenage but, Marie? Yeah, teenage Marie. Yeah, teenage Marie. Teen, no, I'm not talking about Amelia Ulrich. <laughs> <laughs> um, teenage Marie was a little stiff for me, but the, but the chemistry with the two of them and just how much he obviously adored her and supported her, you felt that already you felt that already from teenage Sam Mm -hmm. and that's a hit or miss, you know, that, that could have easily been surface and with him, it was not, I, Mm -hmm. I really thought that kid did a fabulous job. Yeah. I'm not going to lie for the characters. I was a little like, okay, this is a little awkward. Like the whole, you're my land and sky and sea or whatever. <laughs> that yeah. was weird. Yeah. Kind of like, that's, that's probably why she was, why the teenage Marie was a little stiff because she yeah. had to say that very weird line. You know? It's very intense for teenagers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, it was very deep for a bunch of 17, 18 year olds. And I was a little like, okay, I feel really strange right now. <laughs> So we find out that Marie is going off to school back east, and she is going to be a scientist, doctor, really smart lady, Um, (laughs) and her father is not too happy with the whole Sam and Marie relationship. He's basically kind of a cynic, probably like me at this moment, where it's like, all right, you kids you do realize that you have a whole life ahead of you and this is a past fantasy and basically move on son um (laughs) that's one way to put it (laughs) 
<laughs> what did he I, like can, think can of I, the dad? Can yeah. I chime in? Can I chime in really quick here? I, you know, I do have to say one of the reasons why we're gunning for them is because they're the protagonists of the story. So, you know, it's it's like when we watch When Calls the Heart, we know Jack and Elizabeth are supposed to be together. So who's this Charles guy? You know, it's, <laughs> um, but if you're thinking on realistic and logical terms, those two wouldn't have even found much to talk about. <laughs> you, yeah. you got you got a guest ranch hand and someone who is about to be who has taken every honors class there is, who's about to go to med school, and who's becoming a scientist and a doctor. And just how did those two we, we're gunning for them because they're the focus of the story, but how did those two fall in love? <laughs> yeah yeah no I'm, I'm with you there because I mean in I've experienced this myself like as kids you all have something in common you're all going to school together mm-hmm. you have extracurriculars right. together but I just remember going off to college and coming back I, I didn't even leave town I just you know had a different life and I just remember going back to like my church friends and even some of my high school friends I was like so now what (laughs) it's just you don't have anything you know there's nothing in common because some people aren't going to college some people are getting married early some people are you know starting careers early and you know your 20s are just a very tumultuous time especially early 20s with old friendships so yeah I'm with you like Sam and Marie at that stage in life they were going completely opposite directions so Ooh, how I wonder though if they're <laughs> helped out I mean they were friends since like young children and so right I wonder if that yeah. helped them out a little bit they had that more of a history with each other being so young when they first you know kind of yeah that's connected. that's my theory but I mean you yeah. could grow up you could grow up thinking of them as a sibling too if you see them every summer sure yeah so. I mean they obviously didn't considering that kiss but you know <laughs> <laughs> I would hope not (laughs) (laughs) all righty so with sam and marie um sam decides oh no sorry so with sam and marie years go by sam doesn't hear anything from marie she's basically dropped off the face of the planet he has no idea what's happened to her and it's almost like a lost cause you would think but again we have another time jump many many years later sam is a grown up and they are hosting the world health organizational leadership conference thing and lo and behold who appears but marie played by the lovely and wonderful amelia Uru. and it's important to note here that marie looks suspiciously like someone else named dale but now Marie has blonde hair and Dale has red hair. So clearly, so, they're clearly two they're different, different people. people. Okay? Yeah. They're very the, different. The resemblance is uncanny. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Before we jump the gun a few more episodes, let's just stick to <laughs> Oh, that. come on. Anybody <laughs> listening to this podcast is going to have watched the entire series by <laughs> hey, now. We <laughs> might be, you know what? It might just be our podcast that brings in new listeners and new viewers to sign sealed delivered. So we don't want to spoil <laughs> it now because spoiler alert, Amelia <laughs> Ullerup plays two characters in this series and series of movies. There we go. <laughs> Out of the way. <laughs> yes, I mean I guess we've passed the whole, you know, spoiler alert in time frame. I think if something's been out for more than two years, it's a free for all. So I'll this has definitely that. been out more than two years. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a spoiler. It's just you're gonna notice that Dale looks suspiciously familiar. <laughs> I'll okay. be a little different. <laughs> I'm gonna segue real quick on that, but like I didn't notice it the first time. I was just like, who's this Dale lady? <laughs> Yeah. I don't think I noticed and it either. I watch, I watch Chesapeake Shores and I love Amelia Ulrup. It's just it really her hair really threw me because I she's always been blonde to me. So anyways, yes, so Amelia Ulrup, um, she comes back as Marie 
and Sam is surprised and shocked. And well, and I love, and I love what, what kind of drew Sam's attention to her was her asking about the star lilies. Mm -hmm. That was, yes. that was so sweet that she asked about the star lilies and that's when he turned his head and, ev and everything kind of falls into place. Like, wait a minute. She's asking about star lilies. I know that voice. Yeah. I know someone who would ask about star lilies. Yeah, I thought that was sweet. So if you were Marie and you had, you were coming back to Sam's ranch, <laughs> would you have? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. That, <laughs> that was a, <laughs> a little uh, added ending there <laughs> yes. on your words. <laughs> My bad. Um, would you have gone back as just curious or a friend or would you have had feelings still? Oh, you mean the reason why she, mm -hmm. the reason why she went back to the, why she yeah. suggested that the organization go to the ranch? Yeah. Oh, that, oh, that's a tough one. Because we're not, because we're not the character. So we mm -hmm. don't know how she played it. Yeah. I think um, it was just a familiar place to her. I don't think, because she didn't, she didn't even think he was still going to be there, which is a little yeah, odd, I think. Yeah, she was surprised uh, to see him. I think it was just a familiar place. She had a lot of memories there, and so she thought it would be a good place to, to have it. So yeah. that, that's what, that, well, that's what it kind of leads to, is that, mm -hmm. yeah, it was just a, a sweet place that held a lot of memories, and yeah, she even says, you're still here. So I don't think that she was expecting now she may have gone she may part of her reasoning may have been that she wanted to go back to feel those feelings again and to have nostalgia she had nostalgic feelings of their romance and so she wanted to go back because she had such wonderful memories of the place uh but i don't think that she went back there to find him mm -hmm. yeah so you would say that the silence of all the years of her not communicating with Sam, because she, I mean, where else would Sam be, right? Would be a complete friend zones moment. She has friend zoned him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess basically, I just, I just don't think that she expected to see him. Yeah. Because it was just, it was just a job. You know, he, he owns the place now, mm -hmm. but he was, he was a staff member as a teenager and they hadn't, they hadn't talked since they were 18. So, or very soon thereafter. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a logical assumption that somebody would move on from mm -hmm. a summer job. You know, you, yeah. don't, <laughs> you don't expect them to stay there. So. Right. And we find out that he's bought the ranch too. I am, you know what? I was really glad for that because there are tendencies sometimes to have the guy left behind not be successful according to the world's terms. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just still back in the same old humdrum hometown and that's supposed to be okay. Uh, and that's supposed to be good enough kind of and you then you have the career woman who's achieved all <laughs> levels of success really you know that i will admit that bothers me sometimes and so mm -hmm. the fact that sam had bought the ranch that he that he was the boss he was the owner that i really liked that that he wasn't just another stable hand Mm -hmm. That I, I really like that they added that little tidbit in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. So we find Sam and Marie, and they are reunited, and they are doing a lot of catching up. And dear sweet Sam tries to make a move on Marie, and we find out Marie has moved on. She is actually engaged. To someone else. And I mean, like, <laughs> I, poor Sam. I mean, first of all, in my opinion, let's not make moves on the first, like, reu <laughs> like <laughs> reunification after how many years? Like, 10 at this point? 
because she's like she's what a medical doctor and she's got yeah, a phd probably and at least at least six yeah i mean she ha- she's a she and she's not contacted sam at all mm-hmm. and poor sam had expect he kind of expected her to like she he she'd stayed the same or something i don't nostalgia know nostalgia like, has a way of making you do strange and unusual things i guess <laughs> but to make the matters worse as they're going back and you know sam's fuming because i mean not he i i don't think he's necessarily mad at her because he literally just re- reunited with her but more at the fact of himself being kind of so forward and then being burned so badly by his childhood love well and i mean think about it he is so elated to see her again he's totally on a high and then they go off and spend all of this time together i mean marie didn't exactly say up front that she was engaged did she now (laughs) In a, and so no, she did not they, no. no she did not and so they've been spending the whole day together they're sitting by a fire there's all of these stars getting they, caught up in the, the moment the mood is ripe the mood is ripe people <laughs> and then you know he's elated to see her again he's elated to be with her again he leans in to kiss her because they've had such a wonderful day and they're all and they've and he's missed her so much and then he feels the ring on on her hand i mean can you imagine how many levels he crashed right there oh and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, i mean i've run in i've run into ex-boyfriends before but it was when the two of us had no residual feelings for each other or we were both married, so there really were no <laughs> residual feelings, you know? I mean? So we were either single and there were no feelings, or we were married, so there definitely were no feelings. <laughs> and, you know, I still remembered feeling the nostalgic feelings, mm-hmm. but, you know, and so I got a little soft-hearted with the nostalgic feelings, but ne- never, ever wanting to entertain something romantic then. So... Imagine how badly he crashed feeling the nostalgic feelings on top of thinking there was a chance for them now that fate had brought them back together and all of that. I was to say too, especially because they never technically broke up. They just kind of like she went off. Right. My understanding, like as far as there, like he was concerned, it seemed like he had been committed, even you know, from the beginning all the way through. He never really totally. Was stopped caring or loving her and maybe he was well, like, and, the, okay, and it was right, the father long. it was the yeah. father who mm-hmm. kind of kept them apart so that could you know i mean sam could totally take that as you know your father kept us apart you're free now and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. crash and burn yeah. in the worst way with one tiny little piece of rock yeah. <laughs> And I feel like Marie, too, is a little blindsided by his feelings because she had obviously moved on a long time ago. And for her, the nostalgic, you know, was more about the place. It may be Sam because, okay, she could have gone and found him. If she really, really wanted to, she really could have gone and found him. She did not have to wait all those years Mm -hmm. to go back to the ranch. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, and I feel like, that's the that's the funny thing about Hallmark's big time gaps. Yeah. You couldn't do a phone call 10 years ago, you <laughs> right. know when they when they say 15 years have gone by. Seriously? You didn't feel a little funny after the first year you, where you didn't hear a single word, you know? <laughs> and we live in a modern age, people. They have <laughs> called telephones. You know? <laughs> and I'm not going to I'm not going to lie. Um Mar- young young marie not present marie because we're not at present marie and present sam yet but older marie in the time of the world health conference and sam they were they were really frustrating me <laughs> they're not my favorite characters because i was like you ding bats come on <laughs> for several different reasons but that's just me maybe i'm just a not a romantic 
at least for those two. I just, I don't know. But moving on, we so see. Well, hold, hold, oh, hold on, one, yeah. one more, one more thing, one more thing. Marie was very shaken by her fiance showing up. You could, you can tell yes. that even, you can tell that even though she's quote unquote moved on, those feelings were catching up to her because she saw him and she went. I am so sorry, you know, instead of just, oh, honey, you know, yeah. it was, those feelings were catching up to her too at that point. She, so, yeah. I was actually going to mention the fiance, um, but my take on that was that she wasn't sorry because her feelings were catching up. She was sorry because she had just let her old boyfriend down and he was just about to meet her right then and there. And Sam had just about to, like, he was about to kiss her because she was not, no, because I would have, I would have reacted the same way. Like if, it, if I were Marie's shoes and I had just spent all this time with my old boyfriend and I'd talked about him because, you know, what's his name? Patrick's like, oh, this is Sam. Like, obviously he knew that they had, you know, this was the old boyfriend or whatever. That's just awkward. That is so awkward incredibly awkward to just be like uh, hi this is my fiance this is yeah. my old boyfriend and he was just about to kiss me but I'm not going to tell you that because we're engaged and about to be married in like three days it was just I don't know okay. I, the way the way she played it it looked like things were catching up to her yeah but I think it's a little I think it's a little both but I think I'm leaning a little more toward Casey uh what she said because I know I didn't agree with you, Cammy. I'm sorry. <laughs> because Shameful. I think she I think she realized how much it was gonna hurt Sam mm -hmm. to see her new um fiance, which I can't remember his name, but um yeah, I think she just realized how much it was gonna hurt him given that he mm -hmm. clearly was hadn't changed his feelings for her at all. So rewatch. Yeah. Rewatch. <laughs> Postables <laughs> way in. How did you take that? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, if she really had feelings for Sam, she would she would have gone back to him, even though he told her like never come back again yeah like if she really wanted to and if she truly had feelings because i don't know that's just my take on it so anyways moving on past that eight years <laughs> we probably should <laughs> yeah <laughs> eight years pass on and oh wait yes eight years pass on in the postables find a letter a letter in the box that is mangled and indecipherable almost and they find we don't know it's eight years old but it is eight years old it is eight years old and they go and try and find who it belongs to and long story short it is sam and marie's letter and sam had written marie a letter telling her he was sorry for how he had acted and that if she ever wanted to come back she could and a bunch of romantic stuff. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> I love what Shane says right there. She doesn't want him. I'll take him. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Under her breath. <laughs> she says it to Rita and Rita giggles. Yes. I love that line. I love that line. Because, <laughs> hey, all of us want to be sweet talked every once in a while i don't care how technical of a brain you have you know, <laughs> all ladies want to be sweet talk sweet to talk at some point in their lives yeah. <laughs> so they do they attempt to deliver the letter to marie but <laughs> thanks to norman's um tree climbing skills peeping pe tom he's uh, <laughs> peeping tom and <laughs> peeping in the window of marie's house and they see Marie with a young child. They also see a tall guy who gives Marie a hug. And this is at the point where they're kind of like, oh, great. Deliver or don't deliver? We we're going to break up happy a happy family. family or return to sender. So what do you guys, what would you guys have done? Would you guys have, are you an Oliver? We've got to do what the males rules are <laughs> i'm i'm more technical so i would definitely side with all of them like it's our job to like it's not our role to play god and try to how this is going to work out like deliver the letter that that's more me 
but mm-hmm. I I would side with Oliver simply because I'm more sentimental. You know, mm. I we uh, even if she was happily married, she still deserved to know that he felt that way. And the other thing was they made assumptions. Yes, mm-hmm. as so, we know in Hallmark, the hugs, they are always, <laughs> and I, I hate assumptions. I hate, hate, hate them. It's it, always, they drive, not, me, <laughs> they never drive me crazy. Never assume the hugs means something. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, the guy hugging Marie, he didn't kiss her. They barely hugged, you know? That was not a romantic husband-wife hug. You know, it just... <laughs> They, they should have just, you know, gone to the door, found everything out, or, you know, protocol would probably be to just mail the letter. But, you know, they did not know everything. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. Yeah. I, I would have, I, w- I would have uh, mailed the letter. Yeah. I think I agree with you guys, but well, the postables in it. So <laughs> they decide <laughs> to figure out a way to return to sender in which they do. And they actually end up meeting Sam. They find out the whole story and Sam tosses that letter into the fire and it turns into a bunch of ash. Um, and then as the postables are in the DLO, they realize that the guy that they saw wasn't the husband because of his height. <laughs> so, well, they can't deliver the letter now because they've returned to sender and it's now a pile of ash. So what do they do? They have the second best thing, which is Rita! Rita and her <laughs> fantastic memory. So they go to Marie's house and she's a little like, who are you people? What are you guys doing? <laughs> well, that happens every time they show up at somebody's house or <laughs> office. <you know? laughs> it's true. You're the what? The male police? The male police. <laughs> <laughs> male detectives and so rita recites the letter back to marie and they let her know that sam is still single and, and ready to mingle to- <laughs> <laughs> and it's never too late to go okay. back i'm gonna i'm gonna prove right here and now that i'm not complete sentiment <laughs> okay Can you imagine how awkward that would have been you know, I mean, cause I was so glad that they didn't, I was so glad that they didn't have Rita recite the whole letter, that they kind of faded out and cut to the end, mm-hmm. because Rita was putting all the emotion in, and, and you see, you see Marie getting teared up and everything like that, but how awkward <laughs> would that have been? <laughs> telling a complete stranger all these <laughs> deep feelings that a man had for me. so we're both women we're complete strangers and i am telling you all of these very deep feelings you know it just <laughs> would have been would have been slightly embarrassing and awkward to watch you know so i'm really glad they did it the way they did <laughs> so. and rita's really great about you know reciting in an acting kind of way with the emotion and the feeling so uh, with with a very somber tone dear mm-hmm. marie yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i'm really glad they did it the way they did <laughs> <laughs> so marie reunites with sam and i will say here sometimes sometimes that now the sam and marie story for me was very cheesy i mean we laid on a lot of cheese here for my liking i mean it was still very sweet but again it was kind of like uh like for me i was like all right guys i feel a little weird about this but i think the one thing that tied it all together for me is the fact that she didn't just up and surprise him she mentioned that like they spoke on the phone mm-hmm. and i feel like that's way more realistic and it just it just kind of made me go oh good you know it's not like this shock bomb drop because we already <laughs> had that with the world health organization but with right. this one it's like they had all spoken on the phone they had agreed to meet yeah i liked that you know, too I, very I really much like that um and so sam and marie kiss and then they walk to the cabin that sam had built for them oh and he broke ground the day she left for college yes 
tidbit there. Um, and as they walk away, we see in the distance Shane, Oliver, Rita, and Norman watching them. <laughs> Which you gotta <laughs> love it because I was not expecting that at all. I was like, oh, they're watching the whole thing. Once yeah. <laughs> again, it's a little creepy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we already had Norman stalking her from a tree, so I mean, <laughs> it's much, much worse. <laughs> What's worse than peeping from a tree with binoculars, you know, no, a telescope. He had a telescope. So I think that's a great segue since we're talking about spying because there were other things and other people that were being spied upon. (laughs) The postables Um, turned into sleuths. Sleuths, (laughs) three of them, three out of the four. And can you guess which three? Hmm. Obviously. Is that the trivia? I got different trivia. Um, so we noticed that Oliver was acting a bit strange and Shane, Rita, and Norman, well, not Norman, he doesn't really notice it. It's more Shane, really, that notices it. And she ropes in Rita and Norman to figure out what Oliver's been up to because Oliver had gotten a strange phone call and he's being very suspicious. He's being very doesn't private. The, doesn't Rita notice that his tie is tied differently? Yes. Did she? I thought that was. I think so. She she mentions he's he dresses nicer on Wednesdays. I don't know yes. think they mentioned the tie though because she said well he has choir on Thursdays or something. He, dress, mm-hmm. he, he dresses a bit nicer on Wednesdays, and we find out that he also wears cologne on those days yes. too. Mm. <laughs> and so. <laughs> they decide and they being Shane ropes Rita and Norman into spying on Oliver to see where he is going because he abruptly leaves and I love this scene yes it so funny they're running through the streets of Denver stalking Oliver <laughs> Oliver There's a lot of stalking in this episode <laughs> Oliver standing on a street corner and he, we see this beautiful babe walk to him, are, who he hugs. Are we sure we, are we sure we shouldn't call it stockmates? Stockmates. <laughs> and again, and again, there is a hug that is misinterpreted. It all comes Totally back. misinterpreted. <laughs> and Rita says when they see him with the lady, uh, I think this was a bad idea. So the next morning, Oliver meets them at the mailbox grill everybody's looking really suspiciously awkward and embarrassed. (laughs) Act natural! Act natural! (laughs) Which Oliver picks up on right away, which is great. And, um, you know, they're kind of poking and prodding him just a little bit, and he cuts, he basically cuts them off and he says, well, if you notice, I've been acting a little differently lately. He goes on to... You've taken on a lover! (laughs) (laughs) You've taken on a lover. (laughs) Oliver's face in that moment, though, was like, what? What? No! 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 How dare you think that? You know what's you know what's funny to me though is that he's more he's more shocked that they would think that about him than the fact that she used that word. You know, I thought that he would have been Rita, you know, kind of like watch your language or something like we're talking about a man who says what the Sam Hill. You know, so (laughs) so I thought that he would have been shocked by shocked by her use of the word but <laughs> instead he just goes no <laughs> he's horrified that they would think that about him but it sounds perfectly natural to him that <laughs> Rita would use that word you know <laughs> yeah. and we find out Oliver admits that he has been taking dance lessons and unfortunately, his dance partner, Louise, went missing and eloped to Mexico. And she's 85. 85 years old. <laughs> so, dear sweet Oliver's dancing with an 85-year-old lady. And so he no longer has a dance partner. So Rita offers to dance with him. And we see the Rita dance for the first time in postable history. <laughs> Um, and if you haven't seen this, if you've never seen Science Delivery, you need to, obviously. 
but you need to watch the scene because it's so funny. <laughs> I don't know how Jeff, Kristen, and Eric kept their faces straight. <laughs> Because if it were me, I would probably just start laughing hysterically. Probably take lots a few takes. Lots of rehearsals, lots of takes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, Shane didn't. I can't remember. Does Shane offer to be his dance partner? No. Kind, kind of. Well, Oliver prompts it. Oliver yeah, prompts he says, uh, "Miss McInerney, did you receive my message about regarding this?" this? situation you know it's just like save like, me oh, yes, now yes. <laughs> yeah. and, and she kind of you know she's reading I'm like uh yes, yes. see that <laughs> <laughs> i love i love shane's face she's she's trying to grasp the the meaning she's trying to read his eyes like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so shane has Funny. agreed to be Oliver's dance partner just to get Rita off of his back. And we cut to the next scene in which Shane is Shane and Oliver are by themselves and she's basically like, All right, do I really have to do this? Because I'm sure you have plenty of other people mm-hmm. you could ask, like those nice ladies in church. <laughs> and what does Oliver say? Best oh, line oh. ever. <laughs> Best, <laughs> line Best line ever. ever. I don't want a nice lady. I want you. <laughs> Jess, that's another paint. That's another painting right there. I don't want a nice lady. I want you. <laughs> and she's like, be still my heart. <laughs> In the most sarcastic way possible, of course. Oh, no, because before that, he said, uh, we have danced before and you are not entirely without grace. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yes. that's what she He's says. Still my heart. <laughs> it's a great compliment. You're not. You're not without grace. It's like so, Mr. Darcy thing. She's ha- <laughs> yes. That was very much a Darcy moment. Very Darcy like. Oh man. So Shane and Oliver are dance partners. He's tolerable. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's perfectly tolerable. Tolerable. And so when Shane and Oliver go to the dance studio, Shane is like, I, I can't do this. Everybody else is better. And Oliver's like, it's no big deal. Follow me. And then they start dancing and we just kind of see a glimmer of, I don't know, what would you call it? Kindred spiritedness? Rhythm. Rhythm. They do have a good rhythm. They have a they have a rhythm together. It's not it's not quite yeah. chemistry yet. Maybe a spark of chemistry, yeah. but I, think, mm-hmm. I would say a certain rhythm. That yeah, I think there's word. a little bit of intimacy too. Like just the way they kind of look at each other. Like I I see the intimacy a little yeah. bit starting there too. Yeah, it's like a ki- like they're like kindred spirits at heart. Because well, they not in a weird Diana and Anne way, but like they've got a connection that you can't exactly. Oh, they're in be, concert. They're in, in concert. Con- that's the word. Yes, no. that's it. Sorry, I interrupted, but it just came to me. Like, oh yeah, they're in concert. Yeah. They're in concert. Oh, that's beautiful. That's that beautiful. is a good way of putting it. Because I mean, at this point, it would be completely wrong to be like they're in love because Oliver is married. <laughs> And he's a perfect gentleman. He's a perfect gentleman. And if that means he's going to wait for her, he's going to wait for her. And he's not going to entertain the idea of, you know, dating someone else until he's not married. Again. And Shane's not about to say that she likes Oliver. Right. Yeah. <laughs> not at this point. Not at this point. But you could definitely, I think you can definitely tell with Shane that there's that something there that is within concert and rhythm. So... We'll see where the road takes these two and how their characters evolve from here. Um, And so the other storyline in this, which was also a fun storyline, is their new supervisor, Cora Brandt, and Rita's book that's like 1,700 pages. It's a huge book that she's written, and she offers Cora to, to read it. And so Cora is basically reading this book the entire episode, and Rita has no idea that she's actually written about herself and Norman, but in a 
1800s Western Shane has to theme. point it out <laughs> to her. <laughs> Dorman is, in fact, like Mr. Delorman. <laughs> and Renita Hayweather is also kind of like that's Renita you. <laughs> <laughs> and just the shock and horror that, <gasps> that comes over Rita's face. <gasps> I need my book back. I need my book back. I'll read it. <laughs> And how much paper did Rita, like, how, like, printing all those books, how many copies did she have? Four? One for each of them and Cora? Didn't she have a whole box of them? She had a whole she, box of yeah, them. Yeah, there was, there was a box. Like but, candy. But you can't, you can't do, you you can't have too, too many copies of the book because of how big it is. <laughs> she should have just emailed Shane an electronic version. Yes. Rita's <laughs> not going to do Kindle. that. I, said that I love... I love when she's passing them out. You guys really need to read my book. And, oh, I don't know. It's just a really big commitment. Wow. You know, it's just <laughs> when it bangs down into their arms, like, oh. <laughs> so we will see the book again, I'm sure. Yes. Oh, we shall. We shall. <laughs> So that concludes this episode of Soulmates or Stalker Mates or Stock Mates <laughs> or Two Left Feet or I Don't Want a Nice Lady, I Want You. <laughs> or if she doesn't want him, I'll take him. Yeah. <laughs> I, it was a sweet episode. I, it wasn't my, one of my favorites, but I think it was one of the more pivotal ones for the postables. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely what about it, you guys well, well it? just yeah it it introduces rita's book which comes into play a lot mm-hmm. in the in the coming episodes and in the movies yes mm-hmm. and then it it like you said it it lights the spark you know it it gets things going with oliver and shane because if there was no dancing then that whole thing never would have started you know mm-hmm. yeah for sure yeah like i said before i definitely was much more interested in the postal storyline because ironically even though i i watch hallmark title and i love hallmark movies i'm actually not a romantic at all um so if it gets too gushy i i don't like it so the, sam and marie was a little bit much for me you know with the whole wind and sky and land thing like we said um so i was yeah much more interested in the postal storyline mm-hmm. Cammy's yes. giving me a look. I thought I knew you. <laughs> Turns out you didn't, Cammy. Just like you didn't know about Mountie number two. <laughs> oh, that's below the belt. Oh. Don't dish it if you can't take it. <laughs> oh. Well, oh. we're about to have some Ooh, trivia versus just because we're about to go to trivia. Yes, and I did horrible in the last one, so I got to redeem Bring myself. Bring it on. <laughs> Down. All righty. Where did Marie go to college? Uh, John Hopkins? Yes. Woo, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I redeemed myself from last time with like a three out of three. <laughs> All righty. Okay, this is an easy one. Get ready. Oh. What day does Oliver have choir? Wednesday. Uh, Thursday. 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 Yes. Thursday. 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 Wednesday's dance. <laughs> yes. Thursday's choir. Very close. That give, gotta give it to Jess. Yes. All righty. What? Take it. Oh. You said it first. <laughs> Going down, Cammy. I got two for three. What's the name of Sam's ranch manager? The manager. He did not know about the World Health Organization. It was the one that was like our computer. Oh, down. the uh, the the Latino guy. Yes. The, the little Latino guy. Um, um, the only name that popped in my head was Carl. I have no idea if that's right. <laughs> it's that's the name of my dog, but no. <laughs> three letters. Uh, Max. It's Tom. Uh oh, we're Tom. <laughs> no, we're close. Tom. All right. Nope. No when, close. when does. Oh, Renita... she's got more than three. Oh. oh, okay. We're ready. I'm ready. When does Renita move to Montana? When does who? Renita. Renita, Renita Hayweather. What year? Oh, what year? Oh, gosh. I, uh, oh, I'm not good with this. 18... I, 29. I don't... 
Ooh, Cammy, you're way closer. 1889. Uh, no. <laughs> 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 All righty, last question. Oh, what, what was Mr. DeLorman's job? Sheriff. He was sheriff. Uh, no. No. Um, oh, I okay. know it. I know it. Oh, Think about on. the mail. Oh, he was postmaster. 1889 in the mail. Oh, 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 oh Pony Express. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I was thinking horse, but I couldn't think anything beyond horse. <laughs> we tied. We tied. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, remind me about Mountain number two. Uh, remind me what's the name of the captain in To Whom It May Concern? Uh, I still don't remember. <laughs> we just thought. <laughs> So, booyah! <laughs> All righty, guys. A little competition here. A little competitive. Yes. A little competitive <laughs> at the very, very healthy, the healthy least. competitive spirit here. There's, there's, <laughs> lots of, there's lots of love. There's lots of love. Lots, lots of, of love. love. I love you, Jess. <laughs> Too much. I'm not a romantic, remember, Kimmy? Oh, oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So I'm next... not even going there. <laughs> Alrighty, y'all. So next week we will be talking about the episode "The Masterpiece." <gasps> yes. So get ready for more dancing and more tissues. That's all we'll say on that. All and right. Painting. Painting. Yes. This 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 is Jess's territory. It's painting. Painting. <laughs> I have a painting regarding this. <laughs> I bet you do. It now lives in Florida, though. <laughs> I don't have it. Right now. Oh. All right. Well, where can people find you guys on the socials? Uh, you Jess, can find. Would you like to go first? I would love to help out for Cammy. Um, yeah. I... <laughs> I can be found on Twitter at JM Bossy, B O S S E 77. On Instagram, I'm Jess at BSW blog. Or you can check out my website, beneathstillwaters.com. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Cami Drama Girl, Cami spelled K-A-M-I, on Facebook at the Hooked Hardy Facebook page. And my blog is hookedhardy.com. You can find me on Twitter at Hallmark My Words. You can find the podcast on Twitter at Hallmarkies Pod, on Instagram at Hallmarkies Podcast. You know, please listen, rate, review, subscribe, like, retweet, and share all our socials we will love you for it and if you are a postable dm us add us let us know what you thought about this episode on twitter or on instagram and we look forward to hearing from you guys because we we love the postables you guys are amazing you guys have been so supportive so supportive of the podcast and um, with buying you know our t-shirts and our merchandise and everything and we just love you guys which is why we're doing this podcast series i mean we are so excited for the newest sign still delivered and you guys are legit the best so um yeah we'll talk to you guys next week have a good one bye bye bye